hands again. All right, so uh, I'm a friend to buy a home and I'm affiliate, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy because officially all of you will be saying I'm doing this, buy home, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, it's maybe at the end of the project, so you people should, should let it be an achievement that, although Ghana wasn't officially part, but it looks like we are indirectly uh, benefiting. Uh, at the end of the day, Bright, myself, and this guy, we'll be taking the knowledge to West Africa. <laughs> That is very good, and we are, we are grateful for that. And thanks for your effort for bringing me as well. All right. This is a very, a very, I've been cornered this morning. Because yesterday was for, for the geopolymer people. Today we are also talking about wood plastic composite. So I thought I was going to speak first. Then Andras will now find something to say. But all the same time. So. So I'll be looking at affordable and sustainable building materials from leather use, uh, lignocellulosic and recycled plastics for Ghana. I'll be using Ghana as a case. However, uh, the whole biome uh, bio home boils on sub-Saharan Africa. And our characteristics are almost the same. So, all right, so uh, I started looking at the, the, the team when I was uh, seeking permission from my vice chancellor, then he said, uh, what is it about that the, 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 the summer school is about? Then I said, it boils down to uh, development of materials for Africa. And apparently when Andreas was in Ghana, we were in the news. Uh, the product that we made was in the news. So I said, we are coming to present results on that. Unfortunately, if you look at this, these are the SDGs, uh, yesterday the professor and others all described your universities. However, mine is not to describe mine. Well, my president is, is an ambassador of the SDGs. Apparently, Africa couldn't attain most of the Millennium Development Goals. So this time, all our projects and our talks, we need to find its way into the SDGs. And this topic of mine falls within, we are looking at decent work and economic growth because our product is going to create works as well as innovative. Then we want to develop us yesterday, the South Africans were talking about slums and sharks. We want to develop our places as well as have some responsible consumption. We have gotten a solution once here. Yesterday, uh, Luvuyo mentioned uh, number of people living in slums. My background starts from the state of housing in Africa. Because biohome is to build Africa. We are going to build or develop material to build uh, Africa. So I look at the state of housing in general and the countries involved, uh, if you look at South Africa, as at 2015, the data is for, from 2015, uh, we have housing deficit of two to three million units. And then we have the 1.5 million households. So yesterday, Emily, what you were asking about the number, it wasn't the number of people living in, in the shacks, but the households. And normally in Africa, when we see household, it, it can cover, you have about six people. <laughs> that is why you have it as, as low as if you have a, a population of 50 something million in, you have only 1.5, so those are households. Then if you look at Ethiopia, as of 2015, uh, they were looking at deficit of 1 million housing units and the annual shortage was around 100,000. Then in Ghana, apparently this was 2015, however, just uh, two, two months ago, our latest records is saying we have over 2 million uh, housing deficit. And the government has put up a plan to produce 100,000 housing units annually for the next uh, five uh, years. If you look all over here, it looks like uh, Africa cannot house its uh, members. And I'm very happy Biohome is also coming along to, uh, with material that we could use. This boils down to the cost of construction in some sense. And if you look at the cost of construction over here, this is uh, per square meter. 
this cost that I have over here is per square meter. The cheapest happens to be with the North Africans, so I'm not surprised they are not part of the biome because it's, it's for Sub-Saharan Africans. So those of us from here, uh, downs. And my problem happens to be West Africa, we happens to be the highest. So this is a single detached building, and the square meter is costing $2,685. Uh, it goes, this is a, a low rise and this is a high rise uh, building. Uh, South Africa is a bit low, but West Africa is, is worse. So whilst looking for materials for South Africa and Ethiopia, uh, I think it's also good we take the same principle for Ghana. So in Ghana, as yesterday was proven that uh, there is a lot of sharks in South Africa. So do we have what we call slums in Ghana as well. We have a lot of people moving from the villages to the cities, and they end up just trying to fix some plywood and some balls together to live in there. So the issue of fire that uh, Louis mentioned yesterday is also quite common in Ghana. However, Unfortunately, we don't have good tenure system in Ghana with respect to housing. So it happens that uh, you can rent a place for a year. The law says you are supposed to pay a rent of three months, then subsequently to be monthly, but uh, the government itself even rent house to pay advance of three years. So there is that insecurity in terms of tenure, because if today the rent is 200 euros, the next month, the owner can decide to uh, move it along. So the informal settlement is seriously taking over a lot of our development. And this, the World Bank has indicated as a result of the high cost of building materials. And that is as a result of the importation of building materials. Because Ghana imports over 70%. And if you look at our currency and how it depreciates, every now and then, the cost of cement and other building materials will be going down. The government has come out with this housing policy and they call it affordable housing. So if you call this affordable housing, two bedroom house of this, the, the government project is costing between $35,000 to $40,000. So it's not an affordable to the ordinary Ghanaian. So the politicians are going to end up to acquire this. And then they will be renting to uh, people. All right, so uh, the Building Construction Association architects and the, the players in the building industry all came together and then they are now propagating. Well, we are all trying that the solution to some of these problems happens to be the cost of the material. So why don't we look for local and alternative materials in, in, to build. Because in the old, we have things like laterite, normal mud, we have bamboos and other things that we were using, but uh, of late, we've shifted to modern materials. So the solution will be partly if we are able to incorporate about 60% local material and then use 40% of the imported material. All right, so uh, alternatively, one material could be WPC. So at the moment, we have what we call plastic TNG in Ghana. Uh, we have a lot of Ghanaian uh, Chinese product, purely plastic. And, and uh, the situation is such that when you use a material in Ghana and it, it looks good, uh, everybody jumps to that line. Actually, it's like similar to Ghana and Nigeria. When we adapt, or once we say this is good, or we see somebody using, we all tool towards that. So they are using a lot of this uh, plastic TNG for cladding, for sealing, for paneling, and whatever. So uh, when we send this message of WPC there, uh, it, it received a very good news. But there was additional issues that we wanted to address. That is, uh, I'll get there very soon. All right, Andras has talked a lot about WPC, so I wouldn't worry you talking about what it means. Uh, but these are some few facts that I want you to know. 
Normally we use, we simply say it's wood plastic, but in our part, we are looking for any material that contains lignin and cellulose. So uh, we have various uh, kinds that are available to us. So we use this material that we consider as waste. Then in that case, uh, deforestation is also on a very high in, in, in Ghana. Uh, we want to reverse that. Then also we want to have our wood, although it will be partly uh, plastics. On another hand, because if you look at Africa, conversion rate, if I talk of the normal conversion rate for law, South Africa has the highest, and that is not more than 56%. So it looks like the others, Ghana, we are around 36%. So we, we cut a whole log, and by the time we finish converting, it's like we just get a peanut from, from it. The rest goes to uh, waste. Then we have small diameter logs that we don't have machinery to process. So they are all there uh, that we don't utilize uh, uh, actually. We only use them for firewood. So we want to get better use for this low grade woody biomass. And we think uh, making composite with them will be the best. All right, these are so far the, the material that Andreas mentioned. Uh, we have the three as well. Then, uh, as for usage, I'm talking of this usage in terms of the European context, because we don't have the materials in, in Africa at the moment, uh, with the exception of South Africa. Uh, when you go to the, the, the seaside and others, uh, they have it. All right, so these are practically some of the uses that is used uh, in Europe. This is not in the African context, but we are also looking forward that we could develop the material so that we can use it in this direction. All right, so one will say, why do we want to propagate WPC? Because actually, I believe in Germany, WPC is more like a dead concept, seriously, because it's already established. They know everything about it. But we want to transfer this technology to Africa. So uh, we believe with this application, we have diverse applications, because it could be used for a lot of uh, product. Then environmental-wise, uh, now Africa is, is choked with, with plastic waste, which I'll talk about very soon. Then uh, in terms of fire resistance, as uh, Lovoyo mentioned yesterday, uh, we have crisis. My, my country, like Ghana, we have market centers. It's now a, an annual ritual. Every year, a part of the market will get burnt. Uh, so we are looking for materials that we can fully prevent uh, from some of these uh, disasters. And then we, in Africa, normally works with, with low technology processes, like carpenters work with saws, hammers, and whatever. If you look at WPC workability, like sawing and cutting, because of the wood content, most of those tools uh, could quickly be adopted or used. So all these, in terms of maintenance, that is the European standard, they'll say is easy to maintain. Uh, but one thing that we should take care is the dust in Africa is, is too severe. But when we develop the material, I hope we will get there. Then we also have other features that we could possibly uh, cover. Uh, these are all things that Andras mentioned. In the processing, he depicted various pictures to you, but in, in one simple way, this is at the moment based on the type of matrix that you want to use. Because you have the natural fibers, you have your thermoplastic, thermoset, and we, you have your biopolymers. But at the moment, we are going through this uh, process. And then very soon, I believe we will move to the biopolymers as well. The processing itself has been talked about. I need not to bother you. However, Andras did mention that we have a problem with, as he did indicate, it's like mixing oil with water. One absorbs water, one hit it. So we are looking for what we call a bridging 
uh, mechanism, and that is where we have what we call the coupling agent. And an element of it is what we call a compatibilizer. Uh, so this, uh, the cost seems to be higher on the normal level, but as we look for low technology, uh, South Africa had been able to develop one that we are yet to uh, patent, for which uh, we will talk, we've, uh, we've talked about over here. All right, so normally if we say there is problem with, with uh, putting this wood and plastic together, what happens is you have your, your, your wood over here and then you have your polymer over here. When you put them together, uh, they stay apart. All right. So we are saying to, to, there should be some form of modification. In addition of the coupling agent is a modification process. So you bring in an element that has two functional ends or one that will decrease uh, one component. So you bring in the compatibilizer so that it will hold on to the fiber to increase the adhesion. Because if the interfacial bonding is good, it affects every property of the material. Right. Oh, sorry, this thing has gone blur. So what it means, uh, I just saw Andras' image, which I must redesign mine. What it means is like, if you have your fiber, you have your polymer, and you have your coupling agent, when you put them together, you could see uh, this is the, a coupling agent. This is a coupling agent. This is a coupling agent. We are saying something that will hold everything together. Other than that, if you don't have this there, then the, the, the one material will separate itself to one side while the other also moves to the other side. Property-wise, it has been established that uh, at the European level, when tested, all these properties were satisfied. So WPC uh, taking it into the African context will not be too bad. It will perform well. Uh, the last time we were doing something, we were thinking of the standard in, in Africa. Uh, but fortunately, we don't have the streams in Africa, like either summer or winter. We don't have the two streams over there. Right, now to my main uh, topic that I want us to look at. Uh, this is a project uh, between, this is a, a subgroup of biohome. Uh, we are running it under a para biohome. So myself, Marco, Goran, Andras, and then Martina. So we are looking for the possibility of making uh, some of this WPC for Ghana. So we wanted to look at the composition and suitability of invasive species for wood polymer composite. Uh, Ahmed yesterday was looking at invasive species to use for geopolymer. And this invasive species that we are looking at uh, in South Africa, it covers a sizable about 10% of it. Ghana, we don't have data for that. However, we have a normal amount of this invasive uh, species. So we want to look for uses for this. And we also have this challenge. Earlier on, I talk about the issue of plastic. Uh, at the moment, we are overwhelmed with, with plastic waste in Ghana. This is a common phenomenon in Ghana and Nigeria. In the whole world, I don't know where we have something called sachet water. In fact, I've never seen some in Europe, nor South Africa. I didn't see some also in Ethiopia, but in, in West Africa, we package water, drinking water, into uh, 300 milliliter uh, plastics. So you drink and you throw them away. This in addition to the normal shopping bags. And in Ghana too, we, have, we put food in, 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 in plastics, like tea, like porridge. Nowadays, people are even putting soup soup. It's like plastic is, is, is used for everything. So the last time I was asking somebody, so the, the temperature of the soup and going into this plastics, you go and you pour 
and then you start consuming. But we have no idea what is going. But the problem we are facing is we quickly throw them there. We throw them and then uh, they go and choke our gutters. This is a clear example. So it's not surprising that places like Ghana and Nigeria, we have a lot of mosquitoes. And we have a lot of flooding. Because all our drains are filled with this waste plastics. So apparently, when some of us started talking about uh, using plastics, now the Plastic Manufacturing Association of Ghana have started trying to let people collect the plastics. But unfortunately, it's the Chinese who are buying them. And we don't know whether they are sending it back or they are producing something with it in Ghana. I'm, I'm yet to uh, look at that one. So we went there with that concept that then we also have a lot of coconut, although we have various fibers there. But at the moment, a lot of people are into the production of coconut plantation. So we buy this, and when the sellers, normally they put it in a wheelbarrow or, on a, on, on, or something they could push. So they sell to you. When they reach somewhere and it finished, they look left and right when no one is there. Then they dump, they dump it there. Uh, one group is looking at how to carbonize this into charcoal, which they've started, they've tried, but uh, when something is not common in, in our part, it looks like adopting it becomes difficult. So the company is, is not uh, meeting the target. So uh, I met them and said, this could also be used because it has been used in other balls, like particle board and others. So I told them, uh, I will engage them so that we could quickly uh, start working with some wood plastic composite. All right, so uh, as part of the biohome or a sub project, we decided to also work a para project. And the important thing we were looking at is to achieve what we call the triple win. So we want to care for the environment whilst we also consider it ecological implication and then uh, ecological and then economic wise, this material that we are developing, we are looking at, if you look at this, this collection, now what happens is the old people in Ghana go about collecting this. Then you go and weigh, then they pay you per kg. So it's now becoming a business. Some time ago, metals were quite scattered in Ghana. And then there was this uh, recycling plant that came. So if you could go about to collect. So now even if you have a metal object, a car or a bicycle, and you leave it out, by the time you come, somebody might have picked a part to go and sell. So we don't have that metal waste any longer. So we are pushing that. This thing should also continue so that people will collect them and then come and sell for some amount. Uh, apparently, uh, we've been able to convince the government to have some preservation fund. So the plastic producers are paying some fund, but uh, from 2014 up to now, they don't know where the money has gone to. They said it's in the central coffers, <laughs> and it's sitting there. All right, so our objective was to integrate this WP, uh, invasive species and see if they perform well as the various product that have been. Actually, we know invasive species can be used for WPC, but we want to see the species from Ghana, if they perform as normal. So that is what we've been doing. So we took one, uh, a tree called Lucenia leucocephala, and we decided to have two compartments. That is, uh, we were looking at one with the back as part, and one without the back. And then we have uh, recycled HDP and normal HDP and uh, our normal coupling agent. In fact, I've worked with coupling agent and, and uh, I did not see the physical uh, impact. That is, in terms of result, I was getting differences. But when I went to do the water absorption of, of this, our product, I could physically see, uh, I have a picture of it, that those without M MAP, you could see that the extractives uh, were coming out. 
All right, so we group them into two. That is, we wanted to get some variables so that we could work along with. So we were having one, we could have uh, the coupling agent as a variable, and then we have the process, being it injection molding and then uh, compression molding. Then one also we have the coupling agent and then also uh, the species. That is one with back, one without back, and we have our formulation group for which I wouldn't disturb you with. Uh, it's still an ongoing work. We are yet to even meet as a team to look through the whole result. Uh, we have done all the tests from anatomy to uh, the mechanical and then the weathering. But for the tensile for which I'm uh, we, we have looked through. This is a product called EcoDeck. That is the, the limit. That is where the, the, the result that they got for their product is a commercial product. It means at least our samples performed even more than that. Although we are saying material was, we don't have to be doing comparison because there may be various variations and various factors. However, I, we wanted to just use this as a basis that if we have this, Whatever uh, the other factors may be, it means it will uh, survive. So we have for our those with MAPE and those without MAPE. And the particle side that we used uh, yesterday when Bryce talked about the C100, we also use the C320, uh, C320 for this. However, the other one, the group two, uh, we use uh, the sieve of one millimeter, the group two, we use the sieve of one millimeter. So we have all our mechanical uh, results, and all of them, at least, there were some variations in some of them, but the, the performance wasn't all that bad. Then we also have a second part. Uh, actually, we wanted to use this sub project to develop a methodology for determining microplastics from WPC, uh, which we saw microplastic is, is an emerging area. So for the seaside and for other areas, uh, people are working on that. So we wanted to take advantage that we have plastic products. So WPC contains plastics. Where will these plastics be going over time? So we wanted to use the whole project to determine the uh, amount of microplastics that goes out. Uh, but I'm yet to meet, the, when the experiment ended, I wasn't around, so we are yet to. Uh, later on, I believe Marco will brief us more on that, or when the team meets, uh, you will hear our response on the biohome platform. So we also wanted to do an effect of the species and compatibilize on the weatherability of wood polymer compost, because we were looking at the African context that how would it perform uh, weather-wise? So uh, myself, Marco, uh, so this uh, Marco is going to lead us in that. And uh, we are finished with the virus test that we are here to meet to analyze. So we believe aging has an impact on the product. And at the end of the day, the wood fiber, if it goes out, it will degrade. But what about the plastic component? So we wanted to do that, to examine the long-term durability of our WPC as and it will perform. And then the, the microplastics is an additional something that you want to see, if indeed uh, the, there are microplastics, because through the weathering process, when you use the UV chamber, uh, the methodology is not yet certain. That is why I did not bring anything here to come and make it look like uh, it's, it's a finished something. All right, so what I was trying to describe that, if we want to look at the impact of these uh, compatibilizers, uh, I took this sample to go and look at the water absorption. And actually, although the result proved that there are differences between those with MAP and those without the MAP, but through the water absorption too, you could see those that you see some color in there, they are those without compatibilizers. Those without compatibilizers. And for instance, this is with compatibilizers. Even those 
that were compression molded without compatibilizer, there was still some element of some uh, water soluble uh, matter that possibly uh, came out. So we are here to me to look at that. So what we were looking at through the weathering was first to look at the changes that may happen after 2016 hours of artificial weathering. So this was just the first uh, cycle of drying that we took these uh, pictures. Uh, but Marco have done the analysis for all the others. So, and this we are yet to uh, look at what might have caused uh, what and that. But I wanted to uh, bring to your attention. So we've done to see as per the 2006, 2016 hours of weathering, <coughs> how each of the balls performed the amount of loss and the amount of fading that uh, took place. Uh, we are yet to get reasons for how they perform and the trend. But as for the trend, we could clearly see there were differences in the poor, especially those with MAP and those without MAP, and the one with back and the one without back. So we are yet to uh, look through this result and then come out with a concrete uh, stand on this. But what we observed or from the results and the, the implication that whatever it is, because wood is biome is going to degrade over a period of time, while the polymer may also degrade over a period of time, uh, all this will bring about some color change. Because we did not add any UV uh, retardant in there. And this color change is going to lead to uh, possible mechanical property loss. So the sample that I used for the uh, water absorption, I brought it to Marco will later on check. If we will reanalyze or we will test that again, then the one that we use for the weathering test as well too, uh, we are going to see if we can get samples to test and see that after the weathering, uh, what is the result as well. So if we have mechanical loss, it may affect a lot of things. And aesthetically, uh, at a point, at the end of it, you see the, it, it became whitish at the, at, at the end of it. All right. And this, we are saying, if this deterioration goes on, it's going to affect a lot of things like the matrix crystallinity. And then interfacial degradation, all these are going to contribute to the negative effect of the uh, product. However, this we will prove this much if we are able to do uh, the mechanical test again to see if after the weathering the, re uh, the, the result went up or down. Because we don't know what might have happened in the chemical. All right, so with our microplastics, uh, we are here to sit as a group with Andreas and then our technician, Johannes, to see the methodology that we developed Actually, it was the normal weathering cycle that we did, but we have some sieve somewhere to collect the running water. Then we will analyze and see the amount of plastics that will come out after each cycle. So we are here to see him to see uh, what we have, whether there was plastic in there or there was no plastic in there at all. All right. Since it's an inconclusive uh, experiment that we are still, uh, still ongoing, we make this basic conclusion. In Africa, for that matter, sub saharan Africa, uh, the need for new sustainable construction materials is something we cannot run away from. Well, if you look at uh, climate change and other factors, we at all costs must fall in line. And WPC is one product that we think we can push for its adoption, so that economically and ecologically it will help us. Then this lesser use uh, material that we are talking of. In fact, when you come to our part, um, we, we don't see them as materials, but we quickly consider them as waste. Uh, we produce particle board from corn, uh, coconut, we have uh, corn hacks. 
the, the corn cobs itself, uh, coconut, cassava stack, because Ghana is an agricultural producing country. Well, we are about 60% farming. And the farmers, at the end of the day, they harvest their, their, their corn and leave the biomass there. So it becomes sometimes, we, they quickly just go and put in fire to burn it. So we are looking for means, and some of these lesser used uh, materials, if we, the last presentation, or the, when we went on to the radio, and they asked us then, we showed them the board we've made, and then the materials we used in making, like uh, they, they were amazed. That if we could use some of this, then it could help us a lot. Then also, uh, going forward, we could do an improvement with the weather ability, because this is a basic uh, laboratory experiment. We didn't put in any additive to either see how it will be. Then even yet to start, uh, we've spoken to some plastic producers that uh, if government can, as we have over here in Germany, that if you are able to collect uh, plastic or some bottles, you go and get the preservation fund. We are trying to uh, work on that. Not long ago, I think in Uganda, they banned using plastics. Our government, the World Bank had indeed even uh, they, they approved that Ghana should ban the use of uh, plastics. However, these plastic producers were able, or they were ready to bring up the fund. But the fund is now hanging with government. And we were looking for something like this fund so that we could use some for experimental purpose. Because uh, I had written a news article that plastic waste is not a waste, but it's a commodity. Because you could find a use for it. So if you've not found a use for it, then you will say it's a waste. But it's a commodity like all other product. So if we can utilize it for WPC, then why do we not pay attention to that? So at least I believe by the end of our project and our papers, which we are targeting about three to come out, uh, we can make a case for a second buy home. Maybe we'll give it a name in Ghana. Thank you very much.